Hey everyone, it's Jen, and I'm here with part two of my fall reading. So the first book that I have to talk about is Sleeping Giants by Sylvia Neuville, which I gave three out of five stars. So Sleeping Giants is a sci-fi story that starts out with a young girl who discovers this giant hand, and then it picks up um, many years later when she is studying the hand as an adult. I didn't really like the way the story was told, which is through these files. The series is called The Thelmas Files. So it's really just a collection of interviews with the main characters. I thought this could have been executed in a better way. I thought that the author could have maybe tried a little bit harder to give each character their own unique sort of voice. Instead, they all sort of blended together. I also feel with this sort of narrative, I feel a little bit removed from the action, which takes away from my enjoyment of the story. And also with the files, it's really hard to tell about the passage of time. So there were parts where the characters mentioned that like years or months had passed and I had really no idea just because of the way the story was told. So that was a little bit disappointing for me. And the plot wasn't really what I expected. I thought we were going to get something a little bit more epic and sci-fi. And while there was hints of that at the end of the story, a lot of this first book focused a lot on um, backstory and what's happening in our world and sort of how the characters and then all the countries in the world are sort of discovering this sort of alien technology and there's a lot of talk about what's going to be done with it and like is it a weapon and that sort of thing and at the end they do hint a little bit more about this larger sci-fi story and I really hope that that comes back in the second book because that's personally what I'm a little bit more interested in. But I mean I still thought it was enjoyable so I definitely will be picking up the second book when it comes out next year but this wasn't my favorite way to start a series so hopefully the second book has a little bit more of what I'm looking for and hopefully the author and so this is the author's first book so hopefully by the second book um, he'll get a little bit more skilled as a writer and maybe be able to distinguish those character voices a little bit more since the only way we get to know them is through interviews. So the next book that I have to talk about is Good Morning Midnight by Lily Brooks Dalton which I gave four out of five stars. So this book has two main characters. The first is Augustine who is an old man who is an astronomer at this Arctic research base and then there is Sully, a young woman who is an astronaut returning home from a Mars mission when suddenly there is some sort of disaster on Earth that neither character really knows about and they're both sort of isolated in the face of this apocalypse and they're just there's just no one responding to any sort of radio transmissions or anything like that. I really loved this story. It's about how these people who have chosen to be outsiders sort of deal with the reality of this apocalypse. And I definitely thought it was a bit of a spin on like the post-apocalyptic fiction genre. So Augustine and Sully's stories really parallel each other as they both yearn for things and at the end the author does a really good job of knitting them together and it really moved me and I highly recommend it. The next book that I listened to actually was Wishful Drinking by Carrie Fisher which I gave three and a half out of five stars. So I didn't really know much about Carrie Fisher other than the basics of Princess Leia Star Wars and I felt like this book did give me um, an insight into Carrie Fisher and how she thinks and how she talks and how she behaves which I thought was really interesting. It was totally not what I expected and again, listening to this book really made a difference, I think. I think it would have been a very different experience to read it, although I did leaf through a copy of the book, and there are some images in there that were interesting, but I definitely think the audiobook is the way to go for this one, because I believe it's based on a comedy show that she did, so it's much better to hear Carrie Fisher perform it. Um, again, I wish this book had focused a little bit more on her inner life and a little bit more about how she dealt with her um, addiction and depression and that sort of thing, but it was still enjoyable. It made me laugh, although it wasn't as memorable as it was entertaining. The next book I read was The Masked City by Genevieve Cogman, and I gave this book four out of five stars. So The Masked City is actually the second book in a series, and the first book is The Invisible Library, which I read over the summer and I really liked. So the main character in this series is Irene, who is a librarian, but not a normal librarian. She's like sort of a spy secret agent librarian with like magical powers. So it's super cool. It's definitely a fun series. And I thought the second book was just as fun and engaging as the first. The story isn't really revolutionary, but I still really enjoyed it because it has a lot of the elements that I really like in my fantasy. Um, books, magic, kick-ass women, 
like interesting settings, supernatural characters. I really like this series, I definitely recommend it, and I believe the third book is coming out next year. So the last book that I have to talk about today is Homegoing by Ya Jesse. So Homegoing tells the story of eight generations of a family in Ghana and in the United States. It starts out, it starts out with two girls who are half-sisters and one of them stays in Ghana and the other is sent to America as a slave. So it's a very interesting look at this family through time and it's t at times it's very difficult to read because it's based on these terrible times in history and you can really tell that um, yeah Jesse did a lot of research but also I think it's interesting that I loved that she was able to talk about 300 years of history and it didn't feel overwhelming to me I think it's because each character only has sort of one chapter to talk about themselves so it almost felt like it was a collection of short stories and I think she wrote them like that so that they each story on its own has an impact but when they're tied together, I just felt so connected to these characters because I felt like I'd seen them grow throughout the story just because, you know, it's a family saga and I, you got, I got attached to the family. But this is definitely one of the best books that I've read so far this fall. I thought it was really moving and a very interesting read, especially if you are looking to add some more diversity to your reading list, which is something that I am striving to do. I don't really know what else to say other than I definitely recommend it. I thought it was so well written and I actually I can't wait to see what Yao Jesse writes next. Okay, that's all that I have for you t for today. If you are interested in seeing what I'm reading at all times, be sure to check me out on Goodreads to watch more of my videos. Please like and subscribe. And yeah, I will see you guys in my next video.